As Nelda likes to say, sometimes all it takes is a spark. One of your board certifications is hospice care. You had some amazing experiences in that, and you learned a lot from your end-of-life patients. What did that teach you? <laughs> yeah, that could be a, another hour and a half there. So, um, but in a nutshell, when we start to realize that we are spiritual beings rather than human beings, it really changes the algorithm, right? And so if we say there's 7.8 billion people on the planet, the human mind can't wrap around that. We can't, we can't really comprehend 7.8 billion people. And it sounds like we have a, an overpopulation problem. It sounds like this or that. And it sounds like, oh, this is why we're having so many problems. This is why the Gates Foundation is trying to limit population growth because it's our primary problem or whatever it is it sounds like a real issue until you realize, wait, that's 7.8 billion souls. Those are ancient you know, beings that are presenting in this particle moment of, that we call human life, where they transition from light energy beings, you know, angels or spirits or souls or whatever your viewpoint. I can tell you in the ICUs when you watch somebody die or in the home in a hospice patient's position and you see the light energy disappear from a body, it's very, very palpable. Uh, you don't need to check their pulse. You know when somebody just died. And, and so when we go through the, the motions of, of checking and confirming a moment of death, it's, it's just checking the boxes because you know physically you can feel the shift as the energy disappears from that body. And so I think it's extraordinary uh, to see that. And then when you resuscitate somebody in the ICU and pull them back, you realize they're already in, in their next life form. They are already in this journey on the other side of this veil that we call physical life. And they see such beauty and they see such miraculous acceptance of who they are. And they see such miraculous realization of their purpose and how everything has been perfect. Not, nothing was out of place. And when you take that and now extrapolate it, it means that we need the journey of poisoning our, our, our planet to the point of extinction so that we can do our next thing. Humans don't change without you know, the pressure cooker being turned on. We don't wake up one morning and say, I feel great, but I think I'm gonna change everything. We just don't do that. And so we have to have this cataclysmic pressure on us to, to you know, change our behavior. And at this moment, it's this extinction pressure that we've created. And, and this extinction event is the, our opportunity to change more and more dramatically than we ever have before. And so we are in our hospice moment. And as a species, we can uh, you know, ex anticipate with actually joy and, and a sense of spiritual hope about the light on the other side of the veil. When we go extinct as a species, we're gonna expand back into our full light purpose and we will have extracted from this human experience whatever we needed to. But I would love to know that that's millions of years in the future instead of 60 years in the future. I would love to think that my children are gonna have a role in bringing grandchildren and great grandchildren into the world so that they can participate in a particle moment and a soul journey and on purpose in human bodies to participate in this co-creative journey. And so that's really, I think what you're gonna see unfolding in this future is an opportunity for us to really connect into full spiritual potential through a cataclysmic biologic crisis.